So hey LA, we're coming up on the biggest New Year's Eve party ever. That's right, it's hasta la vista to 1999 and beam me up Scotty to the next millennium. It's coming up fast, so put on your silver spacesuits and materialize on over to Cyber Jam. Just a moment. Damien. Hello, Darius. It's been ages. Don't you have a kiss for your sister? After the way you left town, I didn't expect to see you for quite a while, Damien. Well, I had to wait until things cooled down a bit, but now I'm back just in time for the new century. It's all happening at the brand new amphitheater, the most futuristic arena ever built, and we got it right here, baby, in Hollywood, California, USA, planet Earth. Every major record label in the world has chosen one band to represent them, and oh man, the competition for this is off the hook. You've done all right for yourself since I've been gone. I've been moderately successful, yes. Dr. Cloud now? I remember when we used to call you Dr. Psychedelic. Nobody did more drugs than you. So what'd you do, mail in for your degree? Things changed while you were gone. I've cleansed myself of my former addictions. I'm a licensed hypnotherapist now. Really? You help others with their addictions? So what do you call it? I allow myself small amounts now and again for medicinal purposes. Just like all the medications you used to take? You were a walk-in pharmacy. I'll have you know, my final drug experience changed my life. I had a vision which revealed my true purpose, to purify the human race for the next millennium. The place has been sold out for months, but guess what? We have 100 tickets we'll be giving away over the next several days, so keep on listening for details. You could be one of our lucky listeners. And speaking of luck, here are last night's winning lottery numbers. Are you ready? Okay, the numbers are 7, 13, 22, 37, 38, and 19. Good luck, everybody. Stop drinking now. Dr. Cloud shows you how. Hypnosis is the key. Woohoo. You mean to tell me you can actually sit there and help someone stop drinking, smoking, or having kinky sex? Mm-hmm. It's going to be one hell of a boring millennium. My hypnosis methods use breakthrough technology. The success rate is phenomenal. Really? Ugh. Oh. So, you didn't come here just to say hello. Tell me, how much money do you want to go away again? Darius, you have such a poor opinion of me. What makes you think I want money? Though I confess I'm a bit broke at the moment. John, it's Andrew. Who? I can't hear you. You're breaking up. It's Andrew. Andrew, your manager for the last five years. Andrew. Oh. Andrew, I'm sorry. Where were you last night? You left the gig early. Some things have happened. Well, I was schmoozing with some A&R people. I got in late last night. You could teach me hypnotherapy. So that you can use it for crime? No. I will not allow my work to be tainted by your lust for greed. Fine. Who are you calling? Just some friends over at Trash Talk. A local gossip column. They'll be interested in this story. What do you mean? A successful local hypnotherapist with a long history of chemical dependency problems, a major pothead, should do wonders for your business. All right. Good. Darius, don't think of me as your sister. Think of me as your new partner. John, hold on to your maracas. I think we've got a record deal. What? Blade Stone from BS Records was in the audience last night. He loved the show. He wants to see us right here at my place in two hours. Two hours? Some things have happened. Do you hear me? The band is breaking up. The band is breaking up. We're breaking up again? Oh, these telephones. Can you hear me now? Hello? Never mind, just make sure that you're here at my place in two hours, got it? Okay, but... Uh... 
when I heard that these jerk-offs had gotten hold of a 35 millimeter movie camera for 16 days, I, I, I almost came in my pants. I don't know, we met about 40 cinematographers at least, and they all seemed to be nice, but we also needed lights and insurance for the camera. And one of them had both, Dwayne Fox. I figured if I, if I just played him just right, you know, I might be able to carve out a few days with that camera for my own projects, you know? He seemed like a nice guy at first, but he wanted full payment up front since we'd be renting some of his equipment. Well, so we paid him. I mean, he asked for a receipt in which he then had Michael sign. Suddenly he mentions he won't be available for four days due to some commitments. There's just one catch. Since we're using his insurance, he's got to hold on to the camera for those days. Which means we only have 12 days left to shoot a feature-length film. I told him not to piss me off. I said, do not piss me off. Because it'd be a real shame if their entire movie was shot out of focus, you know what I mean? Yeah. They backed down after that. <laughs> we disagreed about everything. Fox wouldn't give an inch. It was his way, all the way, all the time. I mean, how fucking stupid can you be? They paid me up front. I mean, at that point, I could shoot the movie any way I wanted. And what are they gonna do, fucking fire me? Fuck, they should kiss my ass, I even show up. It was a complete nightmare. I mean, he had our money, our camera. Our DP was literally holding us hostage. Listen to my voice. Focus on the rhythm of my words. Your eyes are getting heavy and closing down. They're closed down tight. You trust me, don't you, Bridget? That's good, Bridget. This is Dr. Cloud, and you should trust me. Mr. Stone, thank you for coming over on a Sunday morning. I must say, you really are a dedicated man. Well, Andrew, we like to say the sun never sets on BS records, yes? Besides, that's how I got to be president of my own company. So, you get your tickets for Cyber Jam this week? I heard they sold out the new amphitheater in less than an hour. 8,000 tickets just like that. Should be one hell of a concert, yes? Oh, everybody in town is talking about it. Each label picks one band to represent them, and I understand the competition is fierce. I hear they're even filming it for theatrical release. <laughs> Every label in town is going to be a part of history. Yours will too, I'm sure. <coughs> no. <coughs> no, only the major labels are involved, not cutting edge independents like myself. <laughs> Look, I'll get straight to the point. I like your music. It could and it should be the sound of the new millennium. I think the John Ronson band and BS Music could do some business together. Yes? Now, Bridget, I know in the past you've been very fond of chocolate, even addicted to it. Is that correct? Yes addicted to chocolate. You've eaten so much of it, in fact, that your doctor has told you to stop. Is that correct? Yes, told to stop. But you haven't, have you? His paperwork, essentially it says, you will record three songs at our studios. If they are good, we will move on to the next level. If not, we call it quits. Uh, what about a financial advance for the band? I mean, they will need to pay for some practice time for BS Label will pay for the recording session, nothing more. Once you are signed to the BS Label, we will talk. BS Money. What if something happens to the band, like uh, they uh, break up? Something like that. John, why bring that up now? Nothing's gonna happen. What if? Just out of curiosity. John, John, John! Why would we sign a band that can't stay together long enough to record three songs? Recording dates in two weeks. You and your band show up, ready to rock and roll, or forget the whole thing. Yes? Oh, yes. Absolutely. We will be there. Let's go, Zena. Let's go play. John, why did you have to bring that up? What are you talking about band breakups now? Are you out of your mind? 